Alright my friends, welcome back to Hacksplain. Right now we're going to have a look at the difficulty 3 challenge called Login Amy. And we see in the description over here that we should log in with Amy's original user credentials. And this is pretty interesting over here, let's, let's, let's call it that. It says, this could take 93.83 billion trillion trillion centuries to brute force. But luckily, she didn't read the one important final note. So when I saw this, I was like, interesting. That's definitely something I'm going to Google. So let's start by doing that. I'll say 90 billion trillion centuries. And I will open up a new tab. And I will fire this into Google. And if we have a look at the first few entries, there's one that says, how well hidden is your needle? And it talks about passwords. So that might be an interesting page. So let's go over there. And if we quickly scroll over that page over here, it talks about a lot of password related stuff. We do see that there is one important final note. So it seems like OSP2 shop is referring to that website. And if we quickly look at that, it's just a page that talks about how secure passwords are. And for example, down below here, it tells you that actually the zero G and a couple of dots is the stronger password over PRXYC dot and all the rest of that. So it's it has that right over here. It says, um, you probably know it's a trick question, but blah, blah, blah. The answer is the top one is the stronger of the two. Why is that? The trick here is that the top one has more characters than the bottom one and no password, brute force, dictionary or whatsoever used by an attacker would have that inside their dictionary. And with that, it will take what did it say? Billion, trillion, trillion years to brute force, which is obviously quite a lot of time. And if we go down below over here, it says one important final note. And let's just quickly remember that in two shop, it says Amy did not read the one important final note. So to me, this seems like there is something really interesting in it. And if we have a look, it says the example with the zero G and all the dots, should not be taken literally because if everyone began padding the passwords with simple dots, it talks about padding. The text above says you can create simple but effective passwords by use padding. And an example is a couple of dots. But if everybody is doing that, attackers would realize that this is something a user would do to pad the password with a couple of dots. So in that case, they would start to add that to the dictionaries and then it's not as secure anymore as it is if it's not inside the dictionary. Then it wouldn't take billion, trillion, trillion years. So the important thing here is that you should invent your own personal padding policy. So you can, for example, come up with, um, like it's pictured over here with like an asterisk or um, a dash character or something like that. You gotta invent your own padding, which is not inside an attacker's dictionary. So as Ovid Chushup says that Amy has not read that note, it probably is the case that Amy took this as a password advice and did exactly create her password like that. So my assumption over here right now is that Amy created a password with an uppercase letter, a number, a lowercase letter, and I don't know how many dots those are, I just copied them, but that amount of dots. Whatever. Um, let's have a look at OS G ship once again. We know from a couple of previous challenges that in order to log in with the OS G ship accounts that come with OS G ship, you have to say, um, in that case, the user is called Amy. Web. Got to pop in there. Amy. And the email address is always structured like juice minus S H O P. So that is the fake domain of Juice Shop. And for the password, I'm just going to say 
test right now and see how the login request looks like. I'm actually having Burb activated right now. So I'm saying login and I do say that this is invalid. So if I go over here, I do see a post request being sent to OSP Juice Shop where I set the email to Amy Juice minus SHP and password test. So what could you do to brute force this password? And you as a pretty good hacker obviously would say immediately, let's go with Burb Intruder. So I'm going to send this to Burb Intruder, Control I, and I have this sitting right over here. So let's go to the Positions tab, and let's clear that because we don't want to um, mess around with all the the cookies and stuff. And in here I will just say, well, I need dots. So I'm going over here and I'm going to copy that string. So I want to log in with this string. And I will fill it in right here where it right now says test. But instead of D O or in that case actually a zero G, I want to say, wait a second, I am going to exchange all the first letters and I will add this over here and I'll actually use the keyboard for the rest of them. So I will also play around with the zero and with the lowercase G. So now we have three different payloads that we have to insert. And for that, to get all the possible combinations, we gotta say, we're going to perform a cluster bomb attack. And if, if we go to the attack payload section over here, we do see that we have three payload sets. And the first one, which is this one, is our uppercase letter. So as we're using Burb community, we don't have any lists over here and you could, I don't know, Google any any page on the internet which would give you all the uppercase letters. But we can also just say, you know what, like add them in here and I'll just say A, B, C. And I'll do this really quickly, just give me a second. All right, so the payload count as you see is 26, which is what we expect if we take all the uppercase letters. So. For our next payload set, we see that we want to fill in numbers. And fortunately, there are less numbers than there are letters. So we'll just go with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Well, that was too much. Mm -hmm, 7, 8, 9. And we have all the numbers. And for our third list, for our third payload set, we can actually just say, you know what? Let's use copy of the payload. And in payload position one, we already do have all those letters. So right now, we're going to use the exact same ones, but we're going to add a payload processing rule. And we're going to say, we want to modify the case. And as we have the uppercase ones in payload set one, we want to have the lowercase ones in here. So we say modify case to lowercase okay. All right, so it seems like we're all set up. Let's quickly check the position step once again. We're having a request going to slash rest user login, which is the login path of Juice Shop. And we're trying out all the combinations with uppercase letters in the first spot, numbers in the second, and lowercase in the third user is amy at choose minus sh dot op. All right, this seems right. So let's click on start attack. The usual pop-up comes displayed because we are using Burb Community Edition. And I'm gonna say, okay, and I will sort this in a different way. And what you see right now is there are the letters coming in, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, all the ones, the payload zero stay, uh, the payload, well, two stay zero, which is our first entry and second payload set. What is pretty interesting, what I do see right now is that the third payload is changed as well. And performing a cluster bomb attack, I would actually assume that this is not the case. So 
this should stay lowercase a for all tries with the different letters in the first pillar. So we're going to close this one more time and see if we can fix this. It seems like there is a little bug in Burb with the copy of the payload, payload type. So I'm just going to say simplest again over here and I will add all the letters like I've done before, but now we'll add the lowercase letters. So give me a second. All right, and we're done. What we see is that we once again have 26 payload count. So that's perfect. And let me see if um, that looks better right now. So I will start the attack. And if everything works out fine, we want to see exactly that. So it goes and iterates over all the uppercase letters in the first payload spot. So it goes from A to Z. It stays at zero in payload two and it stays at A in payload three. So this is exactly what we want. Just give it a second and have a look at the change when we reach the letter Z. You will see that payload two is changing and payload three should stay at the letter A. And one more second. Here we go. Almost. Here we go. Exactly what I was saying. So we have A1A A right now. So by doing that, we would walk through all the different ways or all the different combinations of uppercase, lowercase, and numbers in those payload positions. But as you're seeing right now, this is pretty slow. We're at payload 37 out of 6760. That is too slow for me. And I did something for, well, for this challenge exactly. I prepared a little script and I will show you how that script works. And if you are a Burp Suite Community Edition, then you will have this issue with Burb Intruder a lot of times that it's just super slow. And I want to show you how you can easily craft your own, let's say, Intruder payloads and have the requests being executed way faster than by using Intruder. So I'm going to quit that. This is a little boring. So let's click on Exit. And I actually have this prepared for you. So you can go to my GitHub page and there is a gist for you which is called OSP Chew Shop Login Amy.py. So I'm not going to explain right now how Python works, but make sure you have a Python runtime environment prepared and then you can execute this script. This is actually Python 3, so make sure to have that. And I will quickly walk over that in here so you will see that we're starting in the main down below here and we're calling a function called main but before we're doing that we're building a queue which we're calling the, pa the password queue and if we look up here the queue does nothing different than what we've seen in verb intruder so think of this as the first payload position with all the uppercase letters Lowercase letters is actually the third payload position. I could reorder that to make this more clear. But numbers is the second one. So we see all the same ones as before. And what this little for loop, or it's actually a nested for loop, does over here it's, is it creates all the possible combinations. And we have seen before that it is something like 6,700. So we're going to create them and put them in the queue parameter. And this password queue, we are going to an asynchronously run um, main method. We're going to send it to that method, which takes the password queue, puts them in an async queue, and then creates a couple of tasks, which pulls passwords out of this queue and then sends the requests to my queue shop URL, which I have defined up here so you got to fill if you want to use that you got to fill in your chew ship url over here and then you will have the aio http library which is a pretty awesome library for asynchronous web requests 
sending all those passwords that we have created to OS2 shop. And you can see in here that we have once again our post payload with email being amy at juice-sh.op and the password is the one that we're drawing in that specific case. All right, I want to show you how this is executed. And for that, I am going over here to choose shop and I will put this on the right side of the screen and I have Visual Studio Code opened right here. So that is actually quite a decent and simple IDE, but still really powerful that you might want to use if you are not doing so by now. So this is the exact same code in here, but I have um, put in my domain, my URL in here, instead of the placeholder in the chest. So I'm going to run this right now. And if you look below, you see that the script is starting and that this is way faster than Burp Intruder in the Community Edition. So I will put this to the left side. I'll select OS2 Shop over here. And now you can see over there on the bottom left side that we're going through all the possible passwords. So let's see if we're getting logged in as Amy. All right, and look at that. We do get the green banner up here saying, you successfully solved the challenge, log in Amy. So we have passed the challenge. But if we look closely, our script is still running, um, brute forcing passwords, and we're actually not logged in. If I'm looking over here, I'm still standing at this login form, but I'm not logged in. So what did go wrong? Well, it turns out I forgot to put in some functionality, some feature into my tool over here, which would realize that Amy is logged in and which would print out Amy's actual password. So. I want to leave this as a little challenge for you. So this was done like that on purpose. I want to give you the challenge. You can download this script by going to my GitHub page over here and download the chest called Old Two Shop Login Amy. And the challenge for you is to manipulate this script in a way that you know Amy's password. So right now, this is only solving the challenge, but you actually don't know Amy's password. Well, you know that it was somewhere around the K letter, if you look closely, but you don't know the exact password. So take this as a little challenge and comment the answer below or send me a message on Twitter or wherever you want to reach me with a fixed version of this script, which tells you or me exactly what the password of Amy is. All right. I hope this was fun for you. As always, thank you so much for watching. Click on subscribe in the top right corner. Help me with supporting my channel. I appreciate it. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day.